In today's theme park experience, we are going to the world's largest indoor steampunk park. <laughs> that is a mouthful. This is absolutely incredible. The biggest indoor theme park that I have seen. And once you get inside, the, the details are absolutely out of this world. An episode I am very curious to look at further. So stay tuned and we will do just that. Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends! Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight Contest Edition. Today we're looking at Aerodrome Point, created by Steamy88, and here they say. Hello, dear Channel 5 team, here's my park for the Mini Park Contest 2, a 60 by 60 grid. I always a big fan of steampunk and therefore wanted to create a steampunk theme park. This is the first park I truly built end to end with lots of attention to detail, including the parking lot, staff facilities, and so on. It comes to about 110,000 pieces and 300 plus hours of building. At the end, I wanted to create the most realistic theme park I could imagine within the steampunk theme. The park includes five flat rides, three roller coasters, one monorail, and one dark ride. The first one I have ever built and spent a lot of time here with 60 plus hours. There are also a lot of detailed shops, facilities, beautiful restaurants, and immersive feel. I didn't use any of the workshop stuff or anything close to that, so everything in this park is unique and built by myself, including the custom images. If you want to get an everlasting memory you always wanted for a theme park, do not hesitate and visit the first ever Tattoo Studio close to the main plaza. I'm really looking forward to your criticism and I hope you enjoy my park as much as I do. Wish everyone a fair contest. Have fun and stay healthy. Steamy88. All right. Sounds like you had a lot of fun with this. It looks awesome. So why don't we jump right on into it? Ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Aerodrome Point. Hope you're all doing fantastic today. Welcome back to another wonderful theme park experience here on Channel 5 Gaming. And uh, a massive indoor park. Very interesting indeed. In fact, I actually changed the time to, uh, what was it? 10.30? I think it was set to 5.30 a.m. by default. So, but they didn't say anything in here about like what, what to visit at, at what time or why. So we will change it up as we go. I felt to me, especially for the B-roll, uh, this was too dark. Even though there is a good amount of lighting. Honestly, I'm already feeling like it's too dark. I, I want to be able to see things a little bit better. And that was my original decision to go to 10.30 a.m. And uh, yeah, the colors just shine through more. I do like the shadows that we're getting from the dome above us. Now that dome is probably constructive of 100,000 pieces alone. <laughs> so um, it's gonna be running fairly heavy in this one here today. So all the custom art created by the creator themselves with Photoshop or whatever they use. There are a lot of steampunk elements going on here. Now it would be interesting to, a park view, uh, it would be interesting to get a little bit of backstory on the steampunk universe and why they created this dome and what purpose does it serve. Uh, I, I, I'm not a scientist, but my understanding, it would be really, really hot in here. <laughs> and possibly like act as a magnifying glass and literally fry everybody. But I'm not entirely sure. And then on the second half, there seems to be a giant opening for the parking lot. How do they park in the parking lot? <laughs> How do they cross the boat into the parking lot? Uh, please sit on the seats six, seven, eight, or nine. Okay. Let's try that. And uh, yeah, how do they cross the parking lot? And why is there an opening in the dome? <laughs> you put all this effort into protecting the people from something and uh, go and crack a hole in the side. <laughs> you are no longer safe. All right, let's uh, take a tour around the whole park. I actually think this is a great way to start off the experience. And we, oddly enough, we did a steampunk park not too long ago. Copernicus created by Nicer Dicer. They did the same thing, but instead of a monorail, used a steampunk train and it went around the whole park. Both of you guys have chosen to do steampunk in a different way, but both of them are looking like masterful. This is really cool stuff. So it's nice to see like two really high quality steampunk theme parks, 
but done differently. This one's an indoor park. The other one was just like a little bit uh, crazy in terms of elevation and city construction, but they both offer something unique. I still think there's a lot of crazy elevation and city construction within this park, as we can see here from the tall buildings and the big centerpiece in the middle, some skyscrapers going to the top of the dome. Uh, there possibly could be some underground areas or places that are dipping down a little bit. Uh, we can't really see the street view from here, but it's all looking really cool and innovative. So really good to see two different takes on steampunk within the same bracket. I like it. And this is just a, a quick circle around the whole park, seeing everything from a different angle, kind of rotating around that centerpiece in the middle. It's really nice. Okay, and that would conclude the tour. Very fun. Uh, what did they say? There was one monorail, one dark ride, three roller coasters. So you did push the maximum of five, which I really appreciate and love. I am finding five is um, a good number for these mini parks. In fact, if I would have, uh, if I know, knowing what I know now, if I could go back, I would have changed the rules to have five mandatory. But there are cases where I've seen parks where it didn't need the full five. Forcing you to think creatively to make that work is a challenge in itself. And I think that adds to the competition factor. So there's a, a lot to talk about here. And I'm really curious to see what this park looks like without the dome. I want to crack the top off at the end of this video. If you're interested, interested in seeing that, uh, we will do that just for experimentation sakes. So this is what I was talking about. You're, if this was like some sort of steampunk world that we were protecting people from something, there's a hole in the wall. You are no longer protected. <laughs> and I have no idea how these cars are driving here. <laughs> and they like ferry the boat or they ferry the cars over on boat and then like drop them off here and then ferry them back, I guess. I, uh, is that what's happening here? Actually, hey, look at these ATMs, how integrated they are. It's quite cool. Yeah, I, I don't really understand the parking lot, but I understand like the, the desire of having one. It just, I don't know if it makes sense in this situation. Not really a critique, but just an observation. All right, look at this Main Street. Lou's Van Smart Mini Store. They selling vans here? <laughs> Oh yeah, here you go. You got a park map in here. Not sure if I understand it. There's so much, uh, it's, it's not shaped like a circle. Ooh, great interior. They're like grilling the uh, burgers on a open flame. Yeah, these are really nice shops. What is this? Pip Shop Water? Gulpy? Very nice. I like the uh, sewer covers with smoke coming up. They're, they're steaming something down there. Steaming pile of poop. <laughs> Don't walk too close to the crates. Oh, look at this. This is fun. Stick your arm out and grab a book, everybody. You're supposed to be quiet in the library, I thought. <laughs> what up, man? Wait, this is an exit, right? It says exit. But I'm curious to know what's up there. Didn't they say there was like a tattoo shop? I didn't see the tattoo shop. Hmm. Well, it looks like people are getting trapped. Never mind. Yeah, I love the way the natural light comes through, but like gets broken up by the glass above us. Makes for like a really cool effect. All right, this is what I was looking for, a little bit of um, elevation and depth. So this whole thing is like a, a, a gigantic Ferris wheel. Very interesting choice. 
considering how little room you had and most likely had to make your roof higher. Oh, there we go. We got ventilation up there. I didn't even notice that. So maybe it'll be a lot cooler in here than I uh, anticipated. Can't really get a good view of things from the little window seat, but I would like to go look around up there in a bit. Yeah, there's so much like... This is steampunk. <laughs> there's so much zaniness happening. And this is the hotel. Never found the tattoo shop. That's going to bother me. It said something about the most unique experience in theme park history. Hey, that's a cool little car. Nicely done. I like how these pathways tell a story as well. Going back to uh, environmental storytelling. It's just the artwork and inventions that were created over the years to make this monstrosity. The VIP lounge for Channel 5 Gaming. So what? That's me? Should have put a blue shirt on me. That's my feedback for this park. <laughs> That's cool. I like how it's like this little tube tubular extension that's jutting out of the hotel like that. Really creative. Wow. Man, you and uh, Nicer Dicer are going to be duking it out for the best steampunk park of your bracket. I, I don't even know who I would choose at this point. Alright, let's do a ride. Euphoria. We stumbled upon it. We must go on it. Look at this, uh... Safety girders. Yeah, this is just... It's a little bit on the laggy side. One of the laggier parks that we've visited so far. Curious to know how it would run without the... The roof. That'll... Something I will uh, look into at the very end of the video. But we are taking some hits here. We go through this door. And here we are. Is this the ride? The Euphoria ride, inverted two-seater. Here's a look at the stats, 815 meters in length. I'll do seat view on this. blown away by the level of complexity that this coaster had to offer. The um, the amount of depth it dropping down into the, the pipe works, the steam machines, up above, through a greenhouse, uh, weaving in and out of all the buildings and contraptions. It was just like so many near misses. Where are these people going? I don't know which one of these doors is an exit. And uh, yeah, like visually and theme-wise, just over the top really well done i was kind of skeptical on how well these coasters would perform in terms of length and diversity and integration because you're working in such a tight space those coasters must have been really complicated to design to get smooth and then to theme 
but you pulled it off and in a very impressive fashion at that. See, uh, I feel like I need to draw comparisons to the previous Steam Park, par Steampunk Park by Nicer Dicer because these two creators did two completely different approaches. I think Nicer Dicer had a lot more room to work with, whereas um, Steamy88 is doing everything compact and hyper detailed. And uh, I like them both for different reasons and that is making it extremely challenging. I do feel like one of these steampunk parks needs to land in top five, if not both. And uh, you guys are making it really hard. You guys really should have just collabed. <laughs> Saved each other the heartache and worked together and do it in half the time. Uh, Cause your build styles are very similar. What is this? Is this a boat? No, maybe? I don't even know. It's crazy. I don't even know what that word says. The drone wheel. Is this for the Ferris wheel? I can check out the queue, but we already looked at it. I'm just curious. Yeah, these cues are really gnarly as well. And you get... Oh, wow. Yeah, that was worth checking out the queue for sure. Maybe what I could do, just to give it one more chance, is try like a bit of an orbit. There we go. So we can look at the ceiling fans from here. That looks really neat. I like how you did that. There's an airship in here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All these chains. Wow. Insanely, insanely impressive. I don't even know how to get out. I'm just going to fly. It's going to make it really difficult to figure out where I've been and where I haven't because of all these nooks and crannies. And I'm probably never going to find the tattoo parlor. So we're just going to have to give up all hope on that. Oh, we did find another ride of some sort, some sort of attraction. Make our way through this claustrophobic maze. And where are we going? Like the uh, intricate artwork in here. Whoo! This must be your dark ride. We will flip it tonight. I'm assuming. Ooh, that looks nice. I'm assuming you have a, a sequencer on there anyway. You put so much stuff over top. Oh, I just deleted something important. We better close the ride down <laughs> just in case. There's a sign here. What does it say? If the sound on the dark ride don't run, please reload the park and that will work. Do not change any sounds before the dark ride. Enjoy the park. Okay, let's let's just see if there's sound. And we'll do middle seat as normal. Well, I hear music. I see speakers, but I don't hear speakers. Okay, you know what? I'll reload the park. All right, I've reloaded the park and followed the instructions. The only thing we can do now is ride it. All right, fingers crossed that that actually worked. Welcome to Steam Definition. Here you will be given a little insight into the origins, characteristics, movement of culture, and the fascination in films and video games. Enjoy the ride, and maybe after this ride, you will be a little deeper excited about the fascination of steampunk. can be found in the novels and stories of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. These authors describe the future of technology from the perspective of their time. The early industrial age, when steam engines and clockworks were brought to the highest precision, electricity was still in its infancy. was first coined in 1987 when K.W. Jeter suggested a genre description for writers like Tim Powers and James Blaylock in a letter to Locus magazine. It was actually just a joke. Recurring elements of steampunk are of course steam and gear-driven mechanics, Victorian clothing style with mechanical elements. There are many variants of the steampunk that add or emit various elements such as electricity, water, fire, etc. 
modern and futuristic technical functions are combined with the means and materials of the Victorian age. This is what the retro look of technology looks like. to the steampunk movement and the art genre, the word punk stands for philosophy and lifestyle. Steampunks see themselves as a counter movement to modernity. They celebrate the aesthetics of pistons, bolts and gears, in contrast to the purely functional surfaces of touchscreen computers, mass-produced goods and the throwaway culture. Punk elements such as fantastic clockwork mechanisms or an alienated Victorian style of clothing can be found in many modern films and video games. This is how many different types of punk punk came about, such as Tesla punk, diesel punk, atom punk, cattle punk, silk punk, plot punk and many others. We will show you some characters and scenes from the various films and video games. In the fictional worlds of steampunk, steam power has gained greater importance than is known from history. Not only are trains powered by steam engines, but also computers, spaceships, aircraft, steam robots and other fantastic machines made of copper, brass and wood. Electricity is often used to heal or change people. example, many elements of the great video game Bioshock are inspired by steampunk and teslapunk. The underwater city of Rapture and all of its buildings are in the style of the early Victorian era. Even the Big Daddy has steam-powered elements and a drill. Wild Wild West, which was released in 1999, also has many references to cattle punk. The big steam-powered and all-destructive giant spider became the big star of the film. countless films that contain elements and entire scenes of steampunk and their subgroups. Films like Hellboy, Van Helsing, Back to the Future, James Bond, Mad Max, Iron Sky are just a few of the great films that make use of this subgenre. still so much to tell about steampunk and its subgroups, but we don't want to break the scope of the dark ride and stop you here at Aerodrome Point after a nice day. We hope you enjoyed this ride and wish you a lot of fun in the park. <laughs> wow! I like it! See, at first I thought we were going to learn a little something about the park itself, but instead we learned something about steampunk as a whole. And I quite like the history lesson there. I think it's a fun way to do things. And your park is more, it seems to me now, after doing that, it's, it, we're, we're not playing with the idea that we are in some survival world where they use steampunk to survive, but rather this is a museum of modern age for steampunk. And it's like, hey, this is my steampunk creation and it'll teach you a little bit about steampunk and you know, it's turned into a theme park where some people have taken the approach that it's like it's 2020 or it's 2078 and human mankind was destroyed and set back several eras and they use steampunk to survive and blah 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 this is more like a museum and i quite like that i went up an exit well it wouldn't be a channel 5 gaming episode if i didn't go up an exit so we are going to tyro more 
entrance. This is uh, the way I should have gone, but definitely want to check out these queues. They are extraordinarily detailed. Uh, heavy, heavy camera. And we gotta take a look at some of the queues now at nighttime here. I still prefer the 10 a.m., but after seeing the uh, dark ride there, you could tell that there was a lot of effort gone into this lighting. So we should at least see a little bit of this. The creator never specified um, any time of day. And if they do not, I take the liberty to choose myself. So here we go, the Tyro Moor. There is all the stats if you'd like to see them. Another thousand meters in length. I suspect that this guy is going to be very intricate like the last. Unless this somehow is the same coaster. <laughs> no. cool did feel very similar to the last one i feel like they're located in somewhat the same area because we went to the same some of the same spots um i'm just gonna jump out to the street view turning it back to day checking out the street view here again all right so keep out you can never keep me out wait is this is an exit is that why it says keep out <laughs> yes it looks so much different at night. All right, let's see where we can go from the main plaza. This park is uh, actually quite confusing. Well, we've definitely been here. Arrow test flight, the barber shop. Where's the tattoos? You lied to me about these tattoos. If you saw the tattoo shop, put a timestamp down in the comments below so I can watch the video back and see where I missed it. So this is the test flight. Now this coaster seems to be located, if this is a coaster, on the, oh. Okay, swinging through the top of a building. I was gonna say, well, with your last coaster, because it felt so similar to the, the first one, maybe it would have been better to have it on the other side of the park, because I felt like the interactions were very similar. This appears to be a queue, but oh yeah, we think we went in there. Yeah, that's for the library. But there is a coaster on this side. It has to be this one. Isaac's Cave. The music um, indicates to me that we are going on a Gears of Fear flat ride. Maybe we are. Such a heavy camera. All right. A spinning coaster. Interesting. Spinning spiral. There's the stats. We're going to get right on it. And I think we're going to do a chase view. Let's do it.
Okay, very interesting. The coaster did not spin at all, which means we can probably give this another ride at nighttime in track view and just ride it like uh, as if it was um, a standard coaster. So let's try that. I also um, enjoy the fact that we are now riding a coaster on the other side, which is what I was hoping from for the second coaster, which was accomplished with the third coaster. So I'm very pleased with that. All right, very cool. I also got a look at the flat ride, another one of the flat rides, one of the five. I have no idea what the flat ride count is right now, but there's the Helion. We saw the swinging flight there. That's two, that's three with the frick. Three with the Ferris wheel. I know there was another one buried in here. I hear one. Ah, carousel there. And what's number five? Oh, it was the Swift Drifters in the library. So that would be all five. We hit all five flat rides as well as all three coasters, the one monorail that we came in on, and then the dark ride backstory of the history of steampunk. Oh, you know what? I didn't even notice the dragon from the coaster there for some reason, but that is really legendary. Yeah, there's. this is one of those parks where we covered everything in theory, but we're missing thousands of details. It's the, it's the compositions, the, you know, the details that all get absorbed together that are really hard to interpret, but it's also very fascinating for that same reason. And my apologies to the creator if there's like a minor little detail or a tattoo shop that I may have missed, but I did my very best. This is so complicated and intricate, but at the same time, I really enjoyed that about it. It's, uh, we just got lost in the imagination and swept away and that is uh, an indication of a really well designed theme park and i gotta say let me do something real quick okay ladies and gentlemen here is the park without the top on i just really wanted to see what it looked like without the dome sometimes you have to ask yourself when you do an indoor park and by the way it's running really nicely now if uh if the dome is if the indoor area if the building itself is a gimmick or like if was you just built a park and put a roof on it and that's sometimes what i'm afraid of but with the amount of glass the intricacy of it, the fans at the top and the, the, the art you know it wasn't just a box it wasn't just a dome there was some artistic design gone into it there was scaffold the whole way around with a monorail and there was layers of complexity to that dome that made it interesting but at the cost of a huge frame hit whereas now it's running quite nicely and we could pop the reshade back on to see what it would look like uh here and as we could look at it from the outside it looks just just as good with or without the dome, there are so many different levels of height variation between these buildings. There's depth uh, as it goes deeper. You can see that there was some underground in in intricacies done throughout there. I don't know what that little station platform is though. And uh, yeah, like it looks really, really solid. With that said, did you need to put the, uh, the dome on it, right? Like it looks so good. It's such a great park. Did it really even need the dome? Does it still convey the same amount of awesomeness without out the dome and i think the answer for me would be yes it looks really cool there like i said from every angle there's a lot of height and in interesting points i guess the parking lot would make a little bit more sense you could have a road going out now <laughs> but like i like it with and without the dome the, the the challenging part is that thumbnail right like with the dome that is the whole thumbnail whereas this i can actually get a screenshot of the park now and some of these compositions look really interesting so i i don't know what the two i don't know how how to draw the conclusion from this experiment but there have been times in the past where i said you just put a box around your park and i don't think this is the case but on the flip side i also don't think it was necessary the park is great without it so it's not hindering you and it's not really adding anything either and i'm a bit at loss of words whether 
I enjoyed the dome or not. Either way, you did make them interesting enough where it stood out from other indoor parks that we've seen in the past. What do you guys think? Do you like the dome? Do you like it without the dome? Do you think it was necessary? There's a final look at it there with the dome. I like it both ways. I really do. It's an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, either way, it's a very, very cool concept. I think you did your steampunk just exquisitely. Between uh, you and the other steampunk creator in this bracket, it is going to be nail-biter to see which one ends up being the fan favorite. I like them both for different reasons, uh, but there is no denying that this is absolutely legendary. And Steamy88, as a personal note to you, uh, we saw your last mini park that you did, which was also a 60 by 60 just for um, a uh, submission. We featured it as a regular park spotlight this is just miles and miles and miles beyond improvement from your previous creation your previous creation was good the difference between builder level and now master level so <laughs> you've uh, grown a lot between two creations and you have a lot to be proud of with this creation i personally like it i have really no feedback for you i was just uh experimenting with the dome and questioning things and it's always good to question things whether it's good or bad and i'm just still indifferent on it but there's no denying that the theme park itself and all the rides and attractions were absolutely stunning. So great job on this one here today, Aerodrome Point by Steamy88. What did you guys think? Throw your comments down below and that is gonna do it for me in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.